Welcome, 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 my lovelies. Um, lovely to be speaking to you again, as always. Cheers. Um, as you may be able to see at the moment, I am uh, taking two days off um, my work, my seven day a week work, and I'm doing a um, jigsaw puzzle just to clear my mind. And uh, that's what I like to do now and again. I like to live on the edge, what can I say? Um, so, today's video, um, near, near the end of the video, I shall, or at some point in the video, um, I shall put in a, uh, a, a piece to show you uh, I've made another little make for the French kitchen, um, another piece of furniture. Um, I just made it up, um, but I, I shall tell you about that in, during that section. Um, but hopefully you'll like uh, what, I've, what I've made. Um, but the main uh, reason I'm doing this video today is um, I've had uh, one, uh, a new uh, lady, young lady, who has started um, commenting on my uh, pages on YouTube and said that she started watching my videos. Um, first of all, hello, if you're watching. <laughs> I... Um, I had a message from from you saying that uh, you've always wanted a doll's house. Um, it's been a passion of yours. You've managed to pluck up the courage to get one, um, but you are absolutely terrified on how to work on it. You don't want to ruin things, um, and it's and it's made you all sort of oh, what do I do? Um, and it just made me think <laughs> that there is nothing nothing at all to worry about, really nothing. Um, obviously there's a lot of people out there that are just starting um, and, and this lady as well is into sort of interior design um, I think from her messages so we're talking about decorating uh, the, the places, the, the, the rooms um, and she's very very worried about it and it just made me think back to when John and I first started um, Dolls Housing and um, I have to say, I too, apart from I was really excited and couldn't wait to start having a go, but when I did actually get the first house and start um, doing things to it, it, it did give me a little bit of anxiety because I thought, oh, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? One big thing you have to remember um, for anyone who is um, just starting um, is that uh, there is there are, there's no doll's house police out there anything you do to it to a, for, for a start no one's going to come along and handcuff you you're not going to end up in jail sorry to disappoint you um but it is far more exciting than that the world of doll's housing um what i well what i will do is show you some uh, different houses that we've been doing up um from the beginning um, I'll try and I'll try and do it in chronological order so you can see uh, what we first did and then what we're doing now. Um, the good thing is over time um, you do notice how you improve. So it's like everything. The more you practice, the more you you get better at it. Um, but the big thing is is uh, is really not to feel that panic and think I'm going to mess this up. Apart from anything else. If you decorated a wall in a house or wallpapered a house and you didn't like it, you can take that wallpaper off, buy more and put some more on. If you paint a wall, you don't like the colour, you can paint over it. None of it is irreversible. Everything you do to your house is fixable. One of the things is, which is good, obviously, is to buy Doll's House magazines. Um, I think they're, oh, they're different ones. So I'm not advertising anything in particular, um, but I've, I've, I've gone, looked through lots and lots and lots of these and some of the bits in it aren't my kind of thing because I'm not into, let's say, uh, making little bits of food. I buy that because other people are so good at it and I don't want to try and practice and waste time uh, getting good at it when there's so many people out there making it already and I can just buy from them. Um, but there's other things I think I, well, I've just grabbed these magazines at, uh, at random, 
but there's a, a fireplace there, a, a, an arga on the front of this one. I would look at that and you can either simplify it or you can try and copy it. Um, but those sort of things, just ideas to give you um, if you want to start making things, which is something that I like doing. Um, but magazines, look through those. Apart from anything else, it gives some of them give other people's articles in them. So you can see how other people are doing things. And all of it gives you encouragement. All of it. Um, I think... Uh, oh, hang on. More tea. More tea, vicar. As they say in England. Apparently, I don't know where that's come from. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> um, yes, so... The, the, the thing is 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 to is to have a go I'm going to take you first of all we'll go into the house uh, where our houses are at the moment uh, or now now they've moved from here from the workshop except this one um, and I'll show you something that, uh, that I done in the beginning um, and we'll go from there actually for those of you who haven't seen any videos with the gardening yet um, I just thought I would show you this is my walk from work back home again <laughs> um, it's all um, lots of bamboos uh, pathways and things all designed by me um, there's a oh there's Nigel I didn't know he was there hello Nigel oh boy let's say a quick hello oh there we are oh he's enjoying the weather he loves the sunshine don't you <laughs> He's purring away. Hey, okay. Okay, there we are. I'll leave you there. Right, the sun's coming out now and he's in a, a shady area. So if we go here, we come up to the, to the house. And let's go into the conservatory. And now this is my... Oh! And here is Georgie. Hello, boy. There's the baby kitten. Let's put him up here. Oh, back up here, hey? He very often sleeps in this house at the moment because there's no doors in it. So he just, oh, meow. And you're very verbal, aren't you? Anyway, this is, uh, this is the latest house. So I've sort of jumped ahead because that's the first house I've come to. Um, I've bought it second hand. I haven't done anything to it. Um, but I will be in the future. Um, there's a, a lot of plans for that. And this is was my house, but now it's John's house. Um, so he's, this is the Grosvenor Hall, and this is Ashcroft Hall. Um, and we've, bought, we've got a lovely, lovely solid wood cabinet for, the, for John's house there. So that will look very, very nice when it's all done. So anyway, let's go upstairs and I'll show you the, the other houses. Okay, so this was my very first house that I bought. Um, I can't remember now what was on, what was covering the roof. I know the walls were just plain wood, um, painted a cream color, and the windows at the front were just flat windows like these ones. Um, even these ones were different windows that were then they were different sizes. Um, so basically I just looked at the house, had a, started getting ideas of what I wanted it to look like. I wanted a black and white, um, looking house from the outside. I wanted bay windows. So then all you do is you look through the um, catalogues and online uh, places where you can buy miniature stuff and you look to see who's selling bay windows, uh, ones that you like and order those. The uh, door and the other windows I also bought um, and then uh, and then just started uh, from my uh, head basically uh, the ideas that I had. So the roof, this was all um, separate. These are all separate pieces of wood, um, each one of these. Um, so I started uh, putting them along the bottom, then the next row, the next row, and just built that up. Um, that took, as you can imagine, a very long time. Um, so, but it did change the, uh, the outside of the roof. I also did it to the porchway there as well. So it just had a bit of uh, continuity. Um, all the windows I took out and the door, I recut the holes. Um, you just need a little jigsaw thing and you can cut out uh, doors and windows. Um, 
and then uh, it doesn't matter if it's rough around the edges when you cut them out once you put the windows in and the framework it covers everything up so it doesn't matter uh, the bay windows i painted um i learned not great as you can see um but i learned how to do a sort of stained glass window effect um, with coloured paints and I did those uh, and also this was plain there was no wood nothing in between the windows I just bought them as they were that one and that one um, I then added um, some uh, pieces of wood on the inside coming down just thin bits just to make a framework and then I put this over it um, and covered the and put brickwork on it um, I think it was a very either very very thin wood that bent or card or something I can't remember now um, but that doesn't matter but you just find things that, that work um, then the outside of the walls um, I did um, they're basically uh, wooden slats um, but you can uh, well I actually used cardboard again a thick craft card and just cut it into strips all these tips that I tell people they're already on YouTube there's um, dozens and dozens of videos um, and none, none of really what I say hasn't already been given uh, as a tip by somebody else. Um, but if you haven't watched those videos and you've watched mine, then the tips, um, then, then I'm telling you the tips. Um, but these are the bits of cardboard that I just stuck on and overlapped uh, and painted them all white after it was on. Not before, because each card would have warped. Um, so I just put the whole thing on first and then painted it. Um, so it just gives it like a... A nice uh, wood effect on the outside um, the porch there um, that was just plain wood but I put a bit of brickwork paper along the bottom and um, there's a bit of veneer uh, wood thin stuck on top and um, just to give it a wooden effect at the top there um, and now we'll go inside and I'll show you inside um, and like I was saying earlier well I've uh, um, covered the walls uh, with the card and what have you um, if you didn't like that when you finished it, it's only card. You can scrape it, you can rip it off, and you could repaint the walls or do them a brick effect and just change it. It's no big deal. Now, the inside of the house is <laughs> is empty. It looks like the people, the folk have moved out. They actually moved out, really, so we could carry, have the house transported from the workshop up to this room. Um, and now their storage is, is still in storage, so... At some point I shall get around and uh, redo the house and put everything back in. Um, but, but this is actually good because uh, we're talking about the interior design. Um, so here, uh, this was I think going to one of the Kensington uh, shows in London. Uh, we'll be going to one in December, cannot wait. Um, but this was a stick on, I think it was a sticky back wallpaper that I bought. I wanted a sort of... Uh, not mid-century but a sort of I don't know 70s 60s 70s look um, because it's a boho house so the family are here, here the bohemians and this is the look that he wanted um, the <coughs> the flooring um, was actually a, um, a fabric a velvet fabric with quite a stiff backing I think it was an upholstery fabric um, and I just got that from the local upholsterers and they gave me scraps of material um, so I just used I just cut bits of that and stuck it on it's very very thin so the scale is okay um, and then as I said the bohemians wanted things like macrame plant holders I made I can do macrame so I made um, miniature macrames I also make my own bowls and vases as you know so I, I made my own there the light in there that was a paper um, that was just a, a wire a fuse wire that I put round a, a small ball just to get the shape of it and um, just sort of made it wiggly and organic just like the lamps the lights that you used to buy years ago and then I just covered it slowly in layers of tissue paper and PVA um, and put a light inside um, in here again this was this was um, samples from a, a book out of the upholstery shop um, that they gave me and I just cut it into the size and stuck it on uh, more paper um, just stuck that on if you don't like what you've done rip it off and do it again um, in here all oh, the kitchen cabinets and things are still up because they were glued to the wall 
um, but I made the kitchen cabinets um, and put doors on them and what have you um, and then the it was a straight staircase so you don't have to keep the same staircase that's in in houses you can take them out completely and not have any and um, just put doors in the back of your room to make it look like they go into through doors and up into the house um, or you can change the stairs so in this case I got a the stairs were taking up too much space for my liking so I got a, a set of spiral stairs and glued those together painted them and put those in um, fireplaces you can make yourself um, the, the chimney breasts and things or you can make the chimney breast and then you can buy the fireplace to go in this was one that was just made um, so it's uh, nice and simple nice and plain um, and the flooring is all uh, wooden strips um, that I uh, took took apart and then restuck just to make little gaps between them and although you can't probably can't see it but I actually went over the ends of each one with a little scribing tool with a point on it and just put a point there and there on the ends of every board <coughs> so it looked like they'd been nailed in um, just to make it a bit more authentic um, and there's more another macrame holder it's got different designs on it uh, different knots all the way down and a wall sampler that I made that's only a couple of inches wide by about three or four inches long and there's tiny micro beads that I threaded in um, but that was great fun to make and I just put that on a piece of twig so it's just a natural uh, natural look for them um, so that was that um, now I, th I won't go through all the houses because there's the, the video would be very long um, but I will show them at different times on different videos um, but this was not not this was John Boy's house, um, not his first house. I think his first one or two houses have now been resold um, and moved on, and he's replaced them with other houses. Um, but this is one of his latest ones that we've uh, one of his older ones that we've still got, and it's an old Tudor house. Um, he left the outside as it was. He likes it. He doesn't want to change it. You don't have to change everything in a house. Um, but it is good if you change enough that it then feels your that it's yours. Um, the roof was a different roof, um, but on this occasion, he's put uh, the tiles here. These are lengths of uh, strips of card again, the same as I put on my house, but he just cut into them at regular intervals, but not all the way through the width of it, um, just so far up, so it just gave a, a tile effect. And then he just stuck the whole strip on one at a time. Um, that's instead of doing the tile separately. Um, so that's just another way that you can do um, roofing. Um, now if we open up the, the house here and I can show you. Now the inside was just plain. Um, there was nothing in there at all. Um, so John painted the walls the colour that he chose. Um, and then he cut all these strips of wood um, every single strip of wood and just started gluing it on he, he got the picture in his mind or drew out the design that he wanted first of all and then he went ahead and just started cutting them he coloured the strips of wood a dark uh, dark uh, oaky colour so it looked nice and Tudorish um, he's got lots to put in these this house um, it's definitely not kitted out yet um, but that's one good thing one of the many, many good things about having your own house or houses um, is that it's an ongoing thing. You can you can add to them for years to come. So they're never actually completely finished. Um, but here we have, uh, as I said, the walls uh, all were plain. So nothing on them and the ceilings. So John Boy um, put, cut all these bits of wood and stuck them on. Um, I think, oh, he made, he has to dress the bed, but he made the bed. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's panelled at the back. Again, lengths of wood, just cut, measured, and then glued nice and evenly. The floors, he did put the flooring down one at a time, each one. Uh, now, on this occasion, they're very dark, so they're more, more Tudory. Uh, if we come down to the kitchen, um, I will actually, one minute, and I shall move the table out of the way. Okay, now I won't take the thing 
hanging in the ceiling there just in case I start pulling things apart. Um, but the, the brick or stone fireplace at the back and um, that goes up the chimney, up through the ceiling, and then there's a little, there's a five in the middle, there's little coves, coves each side or little uh, things you can put things in. Um, and it looks very uh, sort of, uh, looks like stone uh, tiles. Um, John made the whole fireplace, he made it out of pieces of wood, um, just craft wood that we use in the Doll's House world. Um, and he, he designed it, glued all the pieces together, and then the fronts were, the, the whole outside of the fireplace were then pieces of card that he cut into squares or whatever shapes they are. And then he glued them all on one at a time in a brick-like fashion and then mottled, painted them in a mottled effect with different greys, uh, different shades of greys, light greys, dark greys. And then he also did the flooring with the same bits of card and the grouting in between. And it's just given it a really nice effect. Um, if I show you up in this room here, I can't get in properly but he also made the fireplace there again with bits of wood and card and then painted and he made the fireplace there as well um, nice big old fireplace with the brick insert inside and the brick again is um, probably just paper <clears throat> although you can get um, small bricks as well that you can put in yourself um, he made quite a bit of the furniture. Um, he made the, the loft ladder, bits of wood again, and the banisters uh, he made, the table. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's coming on, coming on quite nicely. And of course you buy the odd, buy pieces to go in as well. Um, and then the two together give a really nice effect. This was his latest um, acquisition down in uh, teeny, teeny Weeny World in Hythe. Um, let me hold it up. This lovely, lovely Tudor, Tudor chair. Beautiful. And also I've just noticed as I was looking around the house here, these wonderful, wonderful pheasants hanging up here um, with the real feathers. Um, they're absolutely amazing. And um, these are made by our dear friend, um, Eileen, who owns V Miniature in um, Clacton, the Doll's House shop. Um, it's an Aladdin's cave of miniatures. If you haven't been there, you need to go. Look it up online, V Miniature. It's absolutely wonderful. And Eileen is just a joy to talk to. But she makes um, pheasants. She makes a lot of things. Um, but she made these pheasants and they look just great in this old Tudor kitchen. Um, okay, this is um, obviously it's a different day, different shirt. Um, I'm just inserting this bit into the video at this point. Um, since while I was making the video, it was made at different um, different times of the day. Um, we had actually spoken to our friend Eileen. We went to visit them um, that own the V Miniature Shop in Clacton, um, and um, she has kindly um, given me permission to say to you guys, anyone visiting, whether you come from abroad or if you're, <clears throat> if you're already in the UK, um, and if you visit the V Miniature Shop in Clacton-on-Sea, and if you mention that you have seen Richard on Wackyware video on YouTube, um, and, you were, and this is where you saw this message, um, Eileen will gladly give you 10% off anything that you purchase in the shop. So anyone that visits there from now on, if you've seen this video, mention when you go into um, the V Miniature shop and, um, and Eileen will give you 10% off. Yay! And also someone did message me because they'd seen it in another one of the videos. Um, they couldn't see what was written <laughs> on my um, placemat. We have different ones um, and we had these made. Um, this is from um, the film called Ghost. It's a very famous movie with Patrick Swayze. Um, and, um, oh, and Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg. And we had this made, it was one of her sayings in the film, for anyone who wants to know. 
you in trouble, girl. <laughs> so we have different ones from different films. Um, maybe now I've shown you one because somebody asked. Maybe if I have another one out here, I will show you those also. Anyway, let's carry on with the video. OK, now this is a house that um, John has uh, just bought. It's an old, old house that was owned by a very, uh, very elderly lady. Um, so he's just taken this on um, and he hasn't decided what he's going to do with it yet. I think as far as I know, he's leaving the outside because it is such a nice, a nice old build. Really, really pretty. So he's leaving the outside and he'll just do design the inside. And this um, is my, I think this was the next house that I did. So I'd gone up, um, I'd gone up, I'd gone forward and learnt more things um, by this time. Um, with watching lots of videos, reading lots of books and going out and looking at architecture. If you go outside um, into the world and you look up, look up at buildings and you notice different things, get ideas from them. Um, ones that you like, ones that you want for your house and photograph everything um, and then sort through your photographs and then decide what you like to try and replicate. Um, so this was, this looked nothing like this when I got it, um, but it's now my um, French haberdashery um, house and shop. It has a basement which is still down in the workshop because I've, in my recent videos, I've been working on that. So very soon that will be coming up to this house and it will have a whole frontage with a basement um, so I'll show you that when it's uh, when it's more finished um, also this is also where we moved the houses up <coughs> this house is now empty it's uh, uh, Amelie that owns the the property she's had all her stuff or most of it put into storage um, the window was all fixed and glued into place so the display window so that's still still as it is um, but I'll show you on the outside again it was just plain uh, walls there was nothing there um, so this time I, I did a stone a light coloured stone work um, this was made out of egg boxes um, as lots of you will already know because there are dozens of videos talking about doing bricks and flooring with egg boxes um, so this was flattened egg boxes cut to all everyone was cut by hand so it was all irregular um, stonework. I didn't want it perfectly exactly the same um, so I wanted it more of a hand-built building um, originally so um, I did those put those on um, I then I think then I painted them the colors that I wanted I then used a Mod Podge to seal the whole lot and then I went over with the uh, uh, polyfiller or grouting, um, white grouting, put that on and then wiped off the excess. And then afterwards, on top of that, I then went on with a, a miniature doll's house um, supplies. Um, it's called like a moss. I can't remember the exact, exact name of it, but you can just buy it in packs. You mix it with PVA and then you stick it on to whatever you want. So it gives a lovely moss effect. Um, the metal roof, if you haven't watched the video, if you have, you'll already know, but this lovely shiny metal roof um, was made out of a wallpaper that I got in a wallpaper department in a store. Um, you can rip off just small pieces um, in, in the shops nowadays um, to take home and see if that's what you want. So I just ripped off a small amount and uh, used it. Um, underneath the ridges there, so it looks like metal, um, metal panels. Uh, these are lengths of wood that I stuck on first and then I put the wallpaper and folded each piece and creased it and then stuck it on top. Um, I then went over it with a few different shades of uh, greys just to add to the metal look and then I sprayed the whole thing with a gloss um, type varnish just to give it that uh, lovely shine. Um, and all the windows, uh, as I say, I've done those with the egg boxes and the same with the walls. So we'll go inside and I'll show you what I've done inside. Okay, again, as I said, the uh, most of the furniture has been removed. Only the stuff that's sort of uh, stuck on is uh, still there. Um, so I'll just take you into the bathroom. Um, again, they were all plain rooms. Um, so I used, uh, got a, a wallpaper um, with a nice border and put that in. 
um, the flooring again was separate floorboards I wanted this to look a bit older um, a bit rougher um, so I laid the flooring on um, bought the flooring sheets and then uh, peeled them off in fact looking at this one I go yes it was uh, sheets of flooring that I bought peeled them all off and then restuck cut them and restuck them on again um, and this time I then sanded all over to sort of make it look worn at the joins um, different things like that so you don't have to put up with exactly what you buy or, or whatever um, you can you can paint anything you can scratch it you can uh, make it look older as if it would be in a real house um, but that's uh, part of the bathroom really nice bathroom suite there um, but that's all still attached to the walls and then if we come through we've got the hallway again another wallpaper there and this one here and um, this was some um, Le Chimoiserie's wallpaper they come from Spain in fact the one in the hall is Le Chimoiserie's as well um, but if you look up them online I'll try and I don't know if I'll be able to remember or think to do a link um, but I will put their name up on the screen so you can write them down and then look them up um, but that's very very nice paper there again all I think the whole building I did in the flooring so all these floors were laid one sh one strip at a time um, there we have the Le Chimoiserie's wallpaper here um, Amelie the French lady who lives here um, she liked uh, she likes a little bit of opulence so she's got a very ornate fireplace um, painted very nicely um, she's got more pictures and things on the walls, but they've been taken off uh, during the move. Um, so that's that. And then the hallway, I laid the carpet on the stairs. I did do a video on this house of how I went round the corners of laying the stairs on the carpet, um, how I did it. Um, it's It was very, very difficult, but I did work it out for anyone that um, isn't sure how to make a straight piece of fabric go round corners. And again, on those stairs there, I did the same thing there. And they, these ones have metal runners that I bought and then stuck those on. Um, so there's uh, there's more, the, I think all the wallpapers in this house were Le Chimoiserie. Um, it was very, very beautiful. And then come down into the shop area um, these units, uh, they're bought, they're a, a, a Doll's House uh, staple diet. Um, I think they're just brown wood when you get them. I then painted them the same as the doorway there and shabby sheet them. So you just paint them, you sand them, you put wax on them. Um, the coloured bits in them are bits of wrapping paper um, that I had um, with a little fleur de lis on. I like the red coming out against the... Uh, picking out the little red bits in the wallpaper um, so you just it's just by eye um, that you just find things if you put something in in the room or the shop or whatever and it just jars in your brain then it's not right if you put it in the room and it just feels that it should be there and um, oh look I see this is where doing the move um, and this is only my second house and I as far as I remember, I think I stuck the uh, the cornice, uh, the, the um, oh, what's it called? Ridiculous. That's because I'm just talking and not thinking. Um, I had to pause the video then. Of course, it's a ceiling rose. Um, but it just shows you I used a bit of double-sided sticky tape to stick that on. Um, and it, look, actually, see when you do that, it does hold on again. But over time, that's come off. So the good thing is you learn, learn, learn all the time. Look, it's moving now. Don't stick your ceiling roses on with double-sided sticky tape because when the weather gets warm, which it is now, they don't stick. So I will just dab some tiny bits of super glue around there because I don't intend on changing it. Um, but uh, I'll dab some little bits of super glue around there and I'll glue it back on. That was a white ceiling rose that I used and just a bit of rubbing gold that you can buy. And just rubbed it on the relief there just to bring that out again jazzing up what you've already bought um so there we are as you as i say it's all very empty looking because of the move but uh it will become filled again very soon 
Okay, and just to show you the difference or how you um, look, there's a light dropped there because it's just the sticky pad, the original sticky pad. This is only the second house I've used lighting or had used lighting in. And I thought naively that these sticky pads that come with the lights um, stick to the walls. They don't. After a while, they come off. So I will, of course, just slowly, uh, carefully peel that off and I'll use a tiny bit of... Um, strong glue there just to glue it back on again um, and we'll use um, and that will stay on properly then um, but just to show you the difference in the uh, egg box effect that's one of the the if I can come up here you can see it better that's one of the effects of using egg boxes and different shapes different colors and then if I come down here to the pavement outside and it looks like a completely different material but it is indeed egg boxes that are just cut. I've just cut them into slightly more oval shapes and smaller than the brickwork. And then I glued those on and then I colored those in uh, floor colors, um, you know, sort of road, road uh, pebble colors. Um, so I don't know if the light's not great here at the moment, um, but that's just to give you the two different effects that you can see on the floor than the wall and yet it's exactly the same material so hurrah right another thing when you're uh, working on your houses or house um, is to have lots of inspiration around you um, just to keep your mind um, artistic um, keep it active keep it thinking along um, design lines um, these are all I mean in our workshop um, I'll show you the size. These are just small. These are old wooden frames that we had that we painted um, and silvered and what have you. Um, these are made out of, uh, this is paper that's been soaked and paper mache and then cut into designs. Uh, a friend of uh, mine years ago did that for me. Another lady did lots of um, sewing, tapestry sewing on the machine freehand. And that, believe it or not, is all threads done on a machine. Um, it's just a small piece of work. It took her hours to do it, as small as it is. But things like that um, just give you inspiration all the time. Um, your style or, or things, paintings you like. There's an old oil painting we've got here um, that just gives you ideas. Um, and it's just nice to see old buildings. Um, this painting, one of the paintings that we have, gave me ideas of how I visioned um, the French Parisian house just being in a street like this or around the corner so it's slightly more country looking but in an area like this. Um, there's a K Facet card, this is one of his tapestries, a postcard. K Facet, the renowned Canadian um, artist, knitter, painter, um, tapestries, embroideries um, and of course you have shadow boxes so we have a, a shadow box here uh, they're just like little room boxes that you can put on walls um, and they've got little um, designs in them. So they're just miniature rooms. Um, this one here, uh, John liked the ceiling, the beams. So he used that in his Tudor house, um, different floorings and things. And they're really pretty. They're small things that you can just have on walls and still enjoy um, uh, having a miniature room if you don't have a lot of space. Um, that there is uh, a tiny, if I hold my hand up, a tiny frame, tiny little um, postage stamp size, and that's a piece of dried seaweed. Um, and here, my partner of years ago, um, his, his name was Dean, many years ago, we lived in York, and I looked a lot younger and had a dark moustache then, and he did a uh, portrait of me. And just to show you perspective, that's the size of it, so it could actually be put in a small frame and hung in one of my houses, which I may do one day. But he's, he was a very, very good artist. Um, and if we come over here, um, this is all the part of my workshop stock. If we come over here, we have more um, shadow boxes, um, just to give you ideas. You can make pieces, you can buy pieces, you can decorate them um, yourself. You can really do what you want. But as I say, remember, it's, it's, it doesn't matter if it doesn't look right or it goes wrong. Um, 
if it's that awful, throw it <laughs> and do something else instead. But that's just to give you give you ideas. So really, it's, really, this is more of an encouragement video to help others who are just starting up or who are a bit nervous about touching their doll's house um, and and with you know scared of uh, messing it up. You won't mess it up if you do something and it looks a bit messed up. Take it out again. Honestly, it, this is meant to be, or well, not meant to be, it is a lovely relaxing um, hobby for everyone to do. Um, and it's, it is not the end of the world if you decorate a room and you don't like it. Um, you've wasted a little bit of time, although that hasn't been wasted because if you've done something that you don't really like, you have learned from what you've done. Um, and you can redo that, you can paint over it, you can rip it out, you can do it again. Um, so it's really, really, I just have to say to people out there, um, what the, the ones of you who are a little bit nervous or a little bit shy of your houses, um, don't let it rule you. <laughs> it's just a house on a very small scale. Another good thing I'm thinking, we go to a lot of antique fairs, um, uh, and antique shops, um, looking through those, sometimes you find tiny little pieces, um, jewellery finds they're called, um, any little bits of jewellery, um, in fact I will show you, I think, oh here we are, oh that's one of my jewellery boxes, I always say you can never have enough shoes, handbags, or boxes of jewellery. Um, I've always said that. <laughs> so here we let me just show you. Let me put my glasses on so I can focus better. Um, oh, so here, here we have. Oh, one minute. Right. Okay. So this is uh, you can buy little packs little plastic boxes with different little bits and pieces in um, and there are different size beads um, but you can also buy tiny tiny little sort of micro beads as well I think I used those in the macrame wall sampler and the hanging uh, planters that I made and they're nice uh, size um, and also oh actually it's quite heavy because the metal and that is just Lots and lots, I can hold them up here, lots and lots of bits of uh, jewellery, chains, different coloured stones and things, all lots and lots of pieces, different things there. Um, I think some of it I may have purchased, I think you can on eBay, it's no secret, everyone can see them and find them. I think if you put in jewellery job lot, um, I think I bought some of these, not everything, but some of these um, from a, it was a, from a shop, I think the shop maker that's closed down, I think it was something like Debenhams in the UK, and they, there's someone on there selling job lots of second hand or faulty jewellery, um, some of it you can't even see where the fault is in it, um, but, uh, but anyway you can break those up, and then use different bits and pieces, cut bits off, whatever. Um, but that's another good way of sticking things on to um, enhance things, uh, to make things look a bit more elaborate, um, a lot more relief work. And also when you think, it doesn't matter what colour some of these are, or any of them, or the beads, you can glue things on to dress something up and then paint over the whole thing. Um, you can use bits of lace. Um, that's you'll have seen that probably on different videos but if you haven't I'm telling you now um, you can just buy little pieces of lace for different designs you can cut those out you can stick them on bits of wooden furniture and then paint over them it looks like wood relief um, none of it's a secret um, everyone that's seen these videos already knows um, and I'll just show you quickly again it's behind it's behind you oh no it isn't oh yes it is um, just the uh, kitchen that I'm doing for the basement of the uh, French Parisian house. Just how I'm into uh, my decorating now. 
Okay, so if you've just watched the uh, last video of the Parisian house, um, you will have seen all this and uh, how I put it all together. Um, but just to show you again, uh, to give you ideas, um, this is the sort of, that's the pantry through the back and it's, this is a sort of scullery area. It's quite a big room for scullery, but who cares? Um, and that's just for quickness and because I liked it, um, I've chosen to do a paper, a very thick paper there. It's got a slight sheen on it as well, so it looks like polished boards. Um, but that's just an old uh, floorboard effect. And in there it's a lot simpler and it's a dark wood um, skirting board. Um, and doors and things and then coming through here into the kitchen um, I've used a brickwork paper there that you put on um, so it looks like the uh, brickwork of the house that the house was built with in the basement and the, and it wasn't rendered over inside the kitchen so two of the walls were left um, with the brickwork I absolutely love that look and then the rest of the walls were rendered uh, were plastered um, so they're painted. I've just used a sponge and different coloured paints. I did a base paint, a base colour on first of all, and then went over it with a, a couple of darker shades with a with a big bath sponge cut into little pieces. Um, and then just to because I wanted to add more and more, um, they I decided to do the wood panelling. I showed that on the video. Um, that was a tip that I didn't uh, learn from anybody. The way I made the panelling. Uh, so it showed up more like that. Uh, that was something I'm very proud of. If you watch that video, it will show you how I uh, did that effect. Um, and then I used this colour for the panelling because I thought with the, it brought out the bricks in the brickwork. It uh, complemented the uh, light yellow walls and the wooden floor. And then I went, I had also made a little, um, this was a table I made before I decorated the room. Um, so this is the kitchen sort of farmhousey shabby sheet uh, table that will be used. Um, it will be placed somewhere in the kitchen when I've got more furniture then. Um, and also I've did, just done a video of making one of these. I did it in a slightly different looking top and a slightly uh, different cut, different colour. Um, but if you watch that video, it will show you how I how I made this table. And you can make them yourself then. Um, but that's just to give you an idea of um, you don't have to just paint all the walls or paper the walls all the same colour. Th just think, you know, just think how you want it. If you want it less or you want it more. Um, and then just start doing that. You don't have, you've noticed there, the internal doors are a different colour from the back door going out and the window frames there. Um, that's what I wanted. I could have changed them. I didn't want to do that. So don't be dictated to by the by the house to that extreme. Um, it will tell you what it, what it wants to look like, and you'll start working together with the rooms and your your own brain. Um, but also um, remember, you don't have to have everything exactly all the same. You can do what you want. It's your house. Okay, now, as you can see, I have uh, finished the jigsaw puzzle. Um, that was good fun. I um, got that out of the way and uh, I'm able to finish off this video quickly for you folks. Um, I was going to say as well, um, in your workspace um, as it is, it may be a small desk, it may be a kitchen table, maybe a small um, hobby room, maybe a big basement, um, whatever it is. Um, just arrange everything so it feels neat and tidy for you and it's and it feels clear in your head If you've got a clear workspace to work on then it gives you a clear head as well um, Cluttered space cluttered mind as they say um, Some people work better that way. I don't but anyway um, another thing um, I sometimes uh, well very often I burn incense sticks in the workshop because it comes through here and out into the garden some people hate it, I love it. Um, and that's just a relaxing, calming smell. Sometimes I've got a music thing around there. Sometimes I'll put the radio on um, now and again in the background, or maybe a cassette or um, a CD. What's, what's, what are cassettes? I don't even know what made me say that. God, I'm so old. Anyway, cheers. <laughs> cassettes. Um, and also, um, 
And also, as again, I want to thank the viewer that um, asked about um, sort of asking for the ideas and things. Um, so I'm hoping you're watching um, as I've done this video for you as well and hope you've got something from it. Um, another thing is uh, books. I'm not advertising anybody's books. Um, but this one I just got recently. A friend of ours um, ha had it um, and it's got in it. It's, it's all very grand houses. The people that do these houses, they are tens of thousands of pounds upwards. Um, but they've, where they've done these grand houses, uh, it's great for the inspiration. So they've actually done years ago, I think they've done two or three versions of it many, uh, lots and lots of money, um, but um, they have done um, houses in Versailles and, whoops, actually, look, lovely, lovely grand rooms in Versailles um, and I've just got this to look at really just to, um, just to give me, just to give me ideas, like obviously my Ashcroft Hall is going to look nothing like that at all, um, but it will have an appearance of grandeur. Um, as I say, the, these people, um, apart from it costing tens of thousands of pounds for them to decorate your house, they also have lots of people um, put miniatures in for them, they get from different artisans, um, and some of them again cost tens of thousands of pounds just for one miniature so it is uh, an actual miniature of the real building basically um, but don't be dismayed when you see books like this um, just enjoy enjoy looking at the pretty pictures that's what I say um, and then it just gives you just gives you ideas of how to what colour to do rooms how to do walls and things yes that is a full-size apple in the room just to give you a, a sense of scale um, but that's, uh, yeah, that basically just gives you ideas. You, uh, unless you have the money, your house is going to look nothing like that at all. Um, but it will be beautiful in your eyes. Another, some other people will love it also. So when I start on the Ashcroft Hall, which is the big major house that I have in, in, in the house, um, I'm going to do it, think along these lines when I do it. So it will be, let's put it in inverted commas, I hate when people do that. Um, but it will be a version of that. It'll be a very, very cheap version, but it will be expensive to me. Um, and because it's mine, it will be priceless. So who knows? Who cares what it's going to look like? Um, right, okay, so thank you very, very much for watching, folks. Oh, and I was going to show you, I've built a little, um, let me just get it for you. Right, um, I've built a little kitchen unit to go in the um, French kitchen. So I'll put it in place and I'll show you. Um, and all I did for this, just to give you an idea. Um, first of all, I looked at uh, photos on the internet, on images of um, country kitchen cabinets, rustic cabinets. Uh, I went into our own kitchen and we have a, a, a green shabby chic um, kitchen dresser, the big wide double one. And I photographed different areas of that. Um, and then I used those photos um, plus images on the internet, plus a couple of pictures in books that I found. Um, and I just sort of put the whole thing together and just took out elements of each thing to make my own unit. So this is obviously a one-off. Um, I will show you. Hang on, let me just close that door properly so you can see it. Oh, I'll just leave that one slightly open just to give it a look. So here we are. That's my... Um, my rendition of a um, sort of country, slightly shabby sheet and worn. I don't know, I, I can see it, but it's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's just very slightly worn and old looking. I actually, in my head as well, I was sort of thinking it, maybe it was one of Amelie's uh, friends, um, the, the lady that owns a property. Um, it was one of her gentleman friends that is a carpenter, an old guy that's a carpenter, an old guy. <laughs> um, and he, um, and they, she just got him to get pieces of wood from, uh, from the yard and whatever and cut them up and put them together. So where he'd done the doors there, these were 
these were done by hand so they're not exactly planks of wood straight as you can see there hopefully you can see they're just slightly they were hand cut and sawn to put together um, just to give that effect so it's not perfect perfect it wasn't from Ikea or from Harrods or somewhere like that it was just something made up by some old guy basically and that's the effect that I wanted um, although we did find a nice piece of uh, wood and then uh, that is the actual colour of the wood I can't remember what it is now um, but all I did was wax it and it made it slightly darker and then I polished it to give it that slight sheen um, but there's a uh, little wire frame in the front of the cupboard doors there and I've put little stops there so you can't close the doors beyond that these were made with just pin hinges with um, sewing pins that I use um, cut up when I was constructing it and then the top went on to cover up those pins so they can't come out now um, and the small doors there um, I actually I just looked around to see what hinges that I had um, these hinges for this cabinet are um, slightly they're slightly on the large scale if anyone has noticed so please don't write in and make past comments and say the hinges on this cabinet were um, out of scale they are 12 scale hinges but they should have been on a bigger unit if this was all uh, the whole thing was two doors and slightly wider then these hinges would look more in place but like I said it really doesn't matter if that's your look and that's what you've got and you want them for yourself do them and um, what I did do was glue um, glue the hinges um, to the sides and then put the nails in and then I glued the hinges to the doors one at a time and let that dry and then rested the door on the worktop with the door open and nail and uh, put the nails in so they've got glue and nails in them so they won't be coming off at any time doing um, um, but let's put it in place I hope somebody likes it um, I was going to do a tutorial of it um, but I actually spent two days um, slowly working over it I had no idea of measurements um, well I had an idea of scale uh, of measurements um, but to make all the all the little bits to it um, I just basically measured and made it up as I went along to see what fit if it didn't fit I made it slightly bigger slightly smaller and um, so I couldn't have done it as a tutorial um, without um, because I hadn't got the measurements worked out first um, I could go over everything and measure every piece now and do it as a tutorial I don't know we'll see because I'm really really busy at the moment um, but anyway I quite like picking up the colour putting in the beading inside there and picking up the uh, bluey colour of the handles. The handles are just little bits of wood and I've sanded them just to sh um, round them off at the edges to make them look like little plain handles and a little cup handle there. Um, I think the it does actually, they all open, everything works and opens and I'll dress it, I'll put things on it, I'll put things in the cabinet so you can just see them through the through the wire mesh there. I may have the door open with some a towel or something coming out and bits and pieces in there let's see we don't know yet um but anyway let's put it in the kitchen and i can just show you it in situ okay so i was planning so i've measured it as well so it fit nicely in between the back door Oops. so it does go nicely in between the back door there um and it just covers the door slightly so the door's not completely open to, to view in when you look in the room. You don't want to just see a door, um, but it looks quite nice like that. So it looks like it goes out somewhere into a garden. Um, I have got a very large dresser, as I said, along there, given to me by a dear, dear, dear friend. And I'm going to shabby chic that so that will go along that wall. So there is something already planned for that. And hopefully it will look lovely with the rest of the um, furniture. So I'll gradually get bits and pieces in there and make it look like a uh, living kitchen. So anyway, hope you hope you like what you see so far, folks. Please do let me know. Like they say in this book, and um, the people that wrote the book, um, they um, knew um, Christ, Kirsten Baver um, or Kristen Baver. 
um, in London. She, poor lady's not with us now, um, but she had a, a fantastic doll's house shop for many, many years in London. Um, it was a, a, apparently the go-to place for many, many years. Um, but they learned from her as far as they've told us. Um, and a lot of other people say exactly the same thing. When you're making something or you're taking pictures of something to make, um, the, 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 the best thing to say is make what you see, not what you think you see. So if you see a fireplace or you see a kitchen cab cupboard um, in your head, you know how they really are made and how the wooden joins go together because you can actually see uh, how it's made. Don't make that. Just, just make what you see. You just see this box with these doors. You don't see how it's put together or anything. So make what you see, not what you know. Um, and it's a great saying to uh, work by. So uh, there we are. So thank you very, very much folks, folks for watching. Um, hopefully, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing in my next video or when the next video is. I will be planning ASAP. But until then, I hope you all stay well. Um, and please, please take care and speak again soon. Take care all. Bye now.